This right here is my seven figure dividend growth portfolio that I started building late 2017, early 2018. And over the past around seven or so years, I've been using basically every single dollar that I earned through active income and investing my hard-earned money in different dividend-paying stocks and ETFs across the markets. Now, my goal as of right now for this portfolio is to get the total monthly dividend income around $7,200 per month and then keep growing the portfolio from there until it hits $100,000 per year in dividends. But in this video specifically, we're going to go through my actual long-term portfolio and I'm going to share with you my top five favorite positions, whether it be stocks or ETFs that I hold as of right now in the portfolio. And we're going to dig a little bit into each of them. So if you want to see which are my favorite long-term holdings within my long-term portfolio, make sure to stick around, drop a like down below, and let's get right into the first one. Real quick for those that haven't already, make sure to go to the first link in my description and grab my new dividend investing ebook where I share exactly how I went from $0 invested to now earning over $6,000 on a monthly basis and over $1 million invested in the markets. Along with the ebook, you're also going to receive my custom dividend tracker where you can track your dividend progress on an ongoing basis and reach your dividend investing goals. So make sure to grab yourself a copy of my dividend investing ebook and the new dividend tracker today it's the first link in my description. So my number one favorite position as of right now in my long-term portfolio would have to be my 601 shares of the SEHD ETF or the Schwab US Dividend Equity ETF. Now SEHD is actually a position I only started buying shares of in the last few years or so. And that's sort of a shame because I wish I could have bought some shares of SEHD back when I started investing when this ETF was trading around $50 per share. But some of the main reasons on why SEHD is one of my favorite long-term positions is the fact that the ETF holds a diversified basket of holdings that allow me to sleep well at night and has a very high quality methodology and rigorous screenings which make it very hard for stocks to even enter within the underlying index. Now, SEHG definitely aligns with my goals as a long-term dividend growth investor because over time, this ETF has grown substantially in price is very cheap to own at just a 0.06% expense ratio and not only pays a decent starting yield of around 3.5% as of where it's trading currently, but also over the long term, SCHD has not only paid dividends consistently every quarter, but also has paid more and more in dividends over time. Now, because I would consider myself a very long-term investor, I'm currently 31 years old and I don't literally plan on selling my portfolio anytime soon here. I'm looking forward to gathering over the next year or so, 1,000 shares plus of SCHD, which are going to pay me dividends quarterly and going to pay me more and more as years go on. So because of SCHD's basket of holdings, the performance of the ETF long-term and the dividend growth rate, this ETF would definitely have to be one of my favorite long-term positions within my overall portfolio. My next favorite position in my long-term dividend growth portfolio would have to be my 2,856 shares of Realty Income Corporation or ticker symbol O. Now, unlike SCHD, Realty Income actually is a single stock that I started buying way, way back in the day. And I remember in 2018 buying shares of Realty Income in the high 60s and even in 2019 spending over $70 on some shares of Realty Income. Now, luckily for me, I bought the majority of my shares of Realty Income post 2020s. So I do have a pretty low cost basis overall. But because of Realty Income size, the high quality portfolio portfolio for the most part and the track record of the REIT over the long term, I am very bullish on realty income long term and especially as a dividend income focused investor like myself, the monthly dividends that have been paid consistently month after month after month since around 2018 have been awesome. Considering back then I was getting paid around 21 cents more or less on a monthly basis, now upwards of 26 cents per share and when you times that by almost 3,000 shares, it definitely adds up. Realty income has definitely been in a rut ever since interest rates have been moving up, but I think long-term realty income will do just fine. My next favorite long-term buy and hold position in this portfolio would definitely have to be my 1,000 shares of Apple stock, which I bought years ago at an average cost of around $118 per share. Now, to be honest, I started buying shares of Apple just after 2020 because I wanted to build out a long-term position in my portfolio that didn't only pay a dividend off top, but also had some massive growth potential, which compared to a lot of my other long-term positions, Apple definitely has. Now, since then, Apple has, of course, reached all-time highs and has traded up and down, but still, I'm up substantially on my position. And of course, even though Apple doesn't pay the largest dividend in history, I still do get paid substantial dividends on a quarterly basis because I do own 1,000 shares, or at least the dividend is pretty substantial to me. Apple is definitely a staple of my long-term portfolio. I've thought about selling my shares at Apple and moving the money into something more diversified like SCHD or even SPY, but at this point, stay tuned to see what we're going to do in the future. One of my next favorite long-term positions that I've held onto for years also is my 508 shares of the JP Morgan NASDAQ Equity Premium Income ETF or JEFQ. 
Now, funny enough, I started buying shares of JetQ several years ago because I was looking to cash in off that around 10% plus starting dividend yield. But over time, as a lot of other JetQ holders would notice, this ETF is much more than just an income focused ETF. Even though, of course, income is literally in its name, JetQ has also performed substantially as far as ETF price return. Although, of course, for me personally, I have never sold a single share, so it doesn't matter all that much to me. But because of JEPQ's strategy and the diversified basket of holdings and of course the cover call overlay, I was definitely drawn to JEPQ early on. And although JEPQ's dividends aren't necessarily consistent by any means and the dividends are going to be different on a monthly basis depending on volatility and the option premiums, JEPQ still has paid me around 30 plus cents at minimum on a monthly basis ever since I started buying shares of it years ago. Not to mention, like I said earlier, this ETF has actually grown substantially since I started buying shares of it, which at this point has made this ETF more than just an income focused ETF for the portfolio. And side note, if you consider yourself more of an income cash flow focused investor, definitely look into JEPQ because it's one of the best income oriented, cash flow oriented cover call style ETFs across the entire market, at least if you ask me. Now for my last and final favorite holding, and trust me, there are so many holdings within this portfolio that I love. And there's definitely also a few holdings in this portfolio that I wish I never bought in the first place. But one of my other top favorite long-term holdings that I've held onto for years now are my ticker symbol EPD Enterprise Product Partner Shares, which I currently have around 750 or so. Now, to be completely transparent, I started buying shares of EPD years ago when it was trading at just around $20 per share, and I bought into EPD because of the relatively safe dividend they had to offer, and on top of that, the starting forward yield was somewhere north of 8%, if I'm remembering correctly. But since then, partially, of course, because of the way the oil has been trading, EPD has performed substantially well and now trading at around $29 per share, which is a lot more than when I first started buying EPD. But like I said, I bought EPD mostly as a cash flow income focused play. And back in the day when I first started buying shares of EPD, they were paying around 44 cents per share per quarter, now over 52 cents per share per quarter. So there has been substantial dividend growth since I first got into this one. But like I said, also this stock has grown substantially as far as share price, which once again, doesn't matter too much to me because I haven't sold any EPD. But of course, it's nice to see the portfolio grow over time. So there we have it. Those are five different stocks and or ETFs that I would consider some of my favorite positions in my long term dividend growth portfolio. Now, I try my best to not be super married to any different stock or ETF because I think it's more healthy to have an overall strategy and basically find different stocks or ETFs that fit the strategy and trade them accordingly. But over time, you are going to get attached to certain names. I'm definitely attached to names like Realty Income, like JEPQ, for example, and of course, my 1000 shares of Apple which I truly look at in my long-term portfolio as sort of a trophy asset, if you will. But now lastly, I want to hear from you guys down below out of your long-term portfolios. What are three names, whether it's stock or ETFs, that you would consider some of your favorites as far as your long-term buy and hold forever positions? Drop the ticker symbols in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to please drop a like on it and subscribe for more future content like this. Thanks as always for stopping by. And if you are interested in investing, make sure to check out these recent videos I posted right here.